you know, double hit lymphomas. These are lymphomas that have not one but two translocations, uh, in chromosomal translocations involving uh, the BCL2 gene, probably as a primary event, and then on top of that, another chromosomal translocation involving the MYC gene. And it's this combination which results in really high level expression of both BCL2, which suppresses apoptosis, and MYC, which drives proliferation, which is a, is, is a double whammy, is, makes these patients really difficult to treat. In fact, not, impo not impossible. There is heterogeneity in that scale, but you know, these are a patient group that do specifically really badly. And they're quite relatively, relatively easy to, to identify objectively because we can use fish techniques which detect the translocations, use, break, use probes which are together and they break apart, or you can use probes that come together when the, when the translocation fuses. So you, we can identify these patients quite objectively. Uh, and the question is, should we be doing this? Because obviously it adds expense. Uh, and to me, that's a no-brainer. We have to do that. But then, of course, what do you do with that information? At the moment, they're being treated fairly uniformly with, with RCHOP immunochemotherapy, but the results are poor. And basically, what we need is uh, a new therapeutic approach, right? And particularly, many of these patients are elderly. They have uh, significant comorbidities. We need to be thinking of new approaches. So the debate tomorrow, I think, I can't see how our opposition are going to be able to look us in the face. Because, you know, our, I think our, our case is cast iron. It's a bit wobbly on the treatment. We haven't got, any good, very, you know, haven't got any data yet that speak to new ways of treating these things, but we've got a whole range of new molecules which we can potentially use in this scenario for these, for these patients. So they're going to be blown away, out of the water. The old arguments, right, with chemotherapy, historically, have, you, have, have been that you use more and more and more until you reach the maximum tolerated dose, right? And that, that has worked to a degree in lymphomas and leukemias. It hasn't worked in solid tumours. You know, more is not always better, right? I know that. You know, Christmas cake, for example. More is not always better, but more is always more. So, you know, giving more chemotherapy is, is, uh, is not the way forwards for these patients. They, they're probably inherently quite chemo resistant, they're probably very adaptive, so you know, we need to think of targeted approaches. And we do actually have molecules now which will begin, which will target BCL2 specifically, phonetic, phonet, uh, uh, phonetoclax, which is this wonderful BCL2 inhibitor which inhibits protein-protein interactions specifically, is an incredible drug. Is that going to be enough for these patients? Probably not, because they've got so many other genetic events going on that we'll, we'll need to target multiple different signaling pathways. Uh, simultaneously. And that's a challenge because, you know, those drugs are going to be expensive. How do we introduce them in a rational, targeted way? So, the, you know, the argument isn't over by any means, but, you know, I think we've got good grounds to be quietly confident. <laughs>